You dumb and then you think, so Kai Taylor Boca You gon' be alright if you do anything I told you When the police grab you, Kai Taylor Boca I don't care what they ask you, Kai Taylor Boca Say I won't answer shit till I speak to my lawyer After that, little nigga, Kai Taylor Boca You dumb and then you think, so Kai Taylor Boca You gon' be alright if you do anything I told you What's up, y'all? Welcome to another unlawful arrest prevention video Today's video is wild Some of you may have even seen it before But either way the point is in the analysis. If you're already tuned in with UAP, then you know what it is, so I'll keep it short and get right into it. But if you're joining us for the first time, then understand this. On this channel, we analyze crowdsourced videos of traffic stops and arrests to accomplish two goals. The first, to prevent the unlawful arrests and searches of black people. This type of police misconduct typically occurs in the context of traffic stops, usually made under false pretext which cops use to target black people they believe are vulnerable. The second, to help black people bring successful civil lawsuits against police departments for officer misconduct. We educate our viewers on how to respond in and properly document a situation in which they find themselves the victim of an unlawful arrest to swiftly get false charges dropped and place themselves in an advantageous position to sue the police department. Watching videos of traffic stops and arrests helps us see the tactics and tricks that cops most often use to execute the unlawful arrest of a black person. By understanding their strategies, we can develop our own, which allow us to punish them financially later. But like I always say, it's one thing to watch these videos and think you're prepared for certain situations. What we advise on this channel has to be constantly mentally rehearsed. Knowledge is never readily accessible in a high-pressure situation unless you have committed it to memory, practiced, and internalized it. As always, three disclaimers. One, I'm not an attorney. Please contact an attorney if you have an urgent legal matter. If you need help finding an attorney in your area, please submit a claim through unlawfularrestprevention.org and we'll do our best to help you find representation. Two, unlawful arrest prevention and any videos associated with it are not for the criminally minded. They are intended to help ensure legal recourse for citizens who become the victims of a civil rights violation. Three, never, under any circumstances, tell a police officer that you are going to sue him during the course of a traffic stop or arrest. Now, let's get into today's video, which focuses on two main points. One, never do a field sobriety test. Always say that you don't consent to it and request a breathalyzer. Two, if the cops violate your rights, don't let them get off with an angry lecture. That's too cheap of a punishment. Bringing a lawsuit puts pressure on them to change and benefits you financially. Hi there. How you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Good. My name is Officer Winters with the Newton Police Department. The reason I pulled over is because you have your bright lights on. Yeah, I have, a, I have a headlight out, so I just keep my brights on. Okay, well that's not legal. Oh, is it? No. Yeah, I turn when a car when a car comes by, I turn them off. But like, well, you didn't with me. Oh, you weren't close enough though. You were like you're close you're enough. Wild, yeah, you're a while back. It has to be within 500 feet. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. And you're not supposed to have your brights on in the city limits. My fault. My fault. You got your license, registration, insurance yeah, with yeah, you? Yeah, I got you. Okay, we're just gonna speed through this part. The driver provides the officer with the correct documentation, his registration, his insurance, his license, and then watch what happens next when the officer asks him to get out of the vehicle. All right, that'll work. I'm gonna have you hop out with me, okay? Cool. Car on or off? Uh, you could probably leave the car off. All right, bet. I'm gonna roll my window up real quick. All right. Now a cop is allowed to ask you to do anything. In fact, a cop is allowed to ask you anything a private citizen can ask you. He can ask you to donate to the police officer's ball if he wants. Just so you understand, the cop asked him to get out of the car and get into the police car so that he could see if he smelled alcohol on him. If a cop asks you to get out, you get out. But you lock your vehicle behind you and you bring your phone so that you don't have to ask for it later. They may be trying to get into a position where it's easier for them to search your car, which you never consent to. As soon as you are commanded to leave your vehicle, you are now at a point where you should refuse to answer any questions without a lawyer present, except to say that you have not been drinking. Where are you coming from? Back by, uh, his name is Creighton. It's a friend's house. Okay. What are you doing at Creighton's house? We're just hanging out. I have my girlfriend there. I gotcha. Just got back from college. Okay. Go to William Penn. Okay. You play football up there? Yes, sir. What position do you play? My receiver. Okay. Now, whenever we look at DUI or traffic stop videos, I always like to remind the viewer of an extremely important and recurrent lesson. No matter how friendly a cop is acting, do not trust him or believe anything he says. Cops act friendly all the time. When a cop acts friendly, it's not sincere, and it's simply an easy tactic for any cop to employ. 
They are simply trying to get you to say something incriminating by accident since they know you are already nervous. You'll see that what the cop does next proves my point exactly. How much have you had to drink tonight? None. What do you mean none? I've had nothing to drink. Okay. Why would you? Uh, why would your eyes be watery and bloodshot? I just noticed you have Adair County plates. Yeah, I got it from my grandpa. Okay. Do you want to blow me real quick? I don't want to blow you. Pause. We'll probably get there. Um, how old That's are funny. you? Nineteen. Uh huh. Nineteen. Okay. I've had nothing to drink. Okay. So your movements in the car with you fumbling over the registration? Yep. Um, kind of say otherwise. All right. And so does the odor of alcohol coming from your person. Great. Let's, let's do a test and we'll, we'll get to the test. I can't wait. So what happens if, you know, nothing pops up? Do you get in trouble? No. Why would I get in trouble? Because you think I'm drinking, but I'm not drinking. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. All right, let's, let's find out real quick. I'm not going to get in trouble for doing what I'm supposed to do. Can I record it? Yeah, absolutely. What's your name? My name is Officer Winters. So Officer Winters thinks I'm drinking tonight. We're about to do a test, and he's going to find out I had nothing to drink. He's going to look stupid. Ain't that right? It is completely legal for cops to lie to you. The cop got him into the police car just so he could say he smelled alcohol, told him his eyes were bloodshot, and that he appeared to be drunkenly fumbling for his registration. The cop probably already made up these lies before he used them, and is going to continue lying. This is why you never agree to do a field sobriety test. It's the cop's word against yours, and he can always lie and say that you are wobbly or off balance even if you do it perfectly. Even if you pass a breathalyzer test, if you've already agreed to do a field test, the cop can say that even though you passed the breathalyzer, he still suspects that you are under the influence of some other drug than alcohol. Always refuse to do a field test and say you will wait for a breathalyzer if you have to. The cop doesn't even ask for consent to do a field sobriety test here. He just walks the driver away from his car and gets right into the test, almost seamlessly, as if the driver had already agreed. Be wary of this because that is another tactic that cops commonly use. I'm going to have you stand with your heels and toes together, with your arms down to your side. Okay, I'm going to check your eyes. Cool. Okay, what I want you to do is follow my finger with your eyes and your eyes only and do not move your head, okay? Yep. Do you have any questions? Nope. What, what color are your eyes? Hazel. Hazel, do they ever change colors? Nope. Okay. I want you to put your left foot on the line. Okay. Take your right foot, put it in front of your left foot with the heel of your right foot touching the toe of your left foot just like this. Okay. Stay in this position until I tell you to begin, okay? Perfect. You got any questions? Nope. Okay, so from this position, you're going to take nine heel-to-toe steps, touching heel-to-toe each time, keeping your arms down to your side, okay? Gotcha. It's going to look something just like this. One, two, three. You're going to go all the way up to nine, okay? Just watching the field sobriety test, it should be immediately obvious that nothing about it is scientific or objective and that the cops will always be able to point to something they claim indicates inebriation. For example, the driver is clearly able to walk, but he misunderstood the instructions. The cop can say that his failure to understand instructions is proof he may be under the influence. I feel like I'm repeating myself a little, but I don't know how else to put it. You just never, ever do a field sobriety test, no matter what. The driver could have avoided all of this, by just requesting the breathalyzer up front. Gotcha. So you want to get to nine? Come on, man, it's too easy. Let's do the breath now. You two for two. Well, sir, I don't believe you are two for two. How many steps did I say to take? Like eight or nine? I said nine. Why'd you take 14 and then 15? I thought you were going to tell me when to turn. I said to count your steps out loud. Um, so the next test is I want you to stand with your heels and toes together. Stand right here in this flat part. God, you a rookie, bro. Now the driver is confident 
because he knows he hasn't been drinking, and so he calls the cop a rookie. But in these types of situations, you're rarely as smart as you think you are. The driver doesn't realize he has already failed the field sobriety test, which means he isn't off the hook just because he later passes the breathalyzer. We don't need to watch the field test because how he does is irrelevant. Cops will find a reason to fail him regardless, which in this case is his failure to follow the instructions. The kid is mistaken in thinking that passing the breathalyzer will excuse the officer's field sobriety test conclusion. By agreeing to the field test, he essentially gave the officer total discretion over how he could punish or inconvenience him. Now, when the kid blows a perfect score on the breathalyzer, watch how quickly the cops lie and use the field sobriety test to discredit the breathalyzer and then place him under arrest. Because you're showing some very strong signs of impairment. Am I? There's a little bit on the uh, very side of the paperwork you're talking about. So you're not smooth. I mean, I was kind of nervous. So, that's, so, a, that's a telltale sign. So, so you don't agree. All right, what I want you to do is make a tight seal around this and blow outwards like you're blowing up a balloon, okay? Cool. All right. You ready? Yep. Okay, you can relax. Um, so I'm going to read your Miranda. Okay. When's the, right now you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Not even trying to be repetitive or anything, but this is exactly why you decline a field test, which you have the right to do. It's blurry, but look at the 0.00, .00 on the breathalyzer. That means absolutely no detectable level of alcohol in his system. And yet, the cop starts reading him his Miranda rights to place him under arrest based on his observations from the field sobriety test. Now at the police station, the kid redoes the test with a more objective cop who, luckily, vindicates him of being under the influence without requiring blood tests. But let's keep watching. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you before any question, okay? Yes, sir. When's the last time we smoked weed? I do not remember that. Tonight? Oh. Okay, well, I, was, no I, weed tonight, I think right? it's tonight. I've had no weed tonight. Yeah, down what? Why do you think it's tonight? Why do you think I smoked weed? I blew zero, so now you're trying to think I smoked weed. That's what's going on. You can't do that, man. You really can't do Absolutely that. Absolutely, I can. Is he allowed to do that? Yes, he is. So I blow zero and he's spitting drugs, man. That's what we on? I blow zeros. Do you think I'm on drugs? That's ridiculous. I would. My, during my field sobriety, I it is indicative of impairment. So let's 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 be honest. I'm being honest. You smoke like some I, weed at your friend's house? No. You hit a pin? Nope. Okay. Otherwise. All right. And so does the odor of alcohol coming from your person. Great, let's, let's do it. Okay. Why is your field why is your field sobriety so poor? What? Why is your field sobriety so poor? And why are you so lethargic and slow moving and speaking with a slurred speech? I'm and your eyes are watery speech. and your eyes are bloodshot. You know why they're watery? Probably because we're in rain right now, dumbass. Uh, it doesn't affect them in the car or in my car. Well, I don't know what you're seeing because I can't even see my eyes. No weed, I don't smoke weed. I play college football, I told you that. We get tested every Friday. Okay. Don't smoke weed. Today's Saturday. Okay, it's 30 days. Weed stays on your shit for 30 days. So if I did a test next week, I'd be off the football team. Dumbass. Come on. Come on. I want that video too. Okay, but I think you're impaired. I think you're under the influence. You think of I'm impaired? Yes. Well, I'm not. Okay. Do you, uh, you want to talk to another officer? Hell yeah, get him over here. Okay. Do you want to do a drug recognition evaluation or a drug influence evaluation? What's that? Uh, there's an officer who checks your blood pressure, does a whole bunch of tests. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Alright, I'm going to skip ahead because nothing really important happens next. All you need to know is that the driver blew triple zeros, which means he consumed no alcohol. After accusing him of smoking weed and giving a bunch of made-up reasons for why he suspects he smoked weed, the officer offers to bring him to the police station for a second evaluation with a drug recognition expert. Purpose of the drug recognition expert is to be someone who, because of some specialized training, or whatever that means, is better able to detect non-alcoholic intoxication. 
It's all bullshit. But since they didn't say he would have to give blood or urine samples or anything crazy like that, it's not wrong for the kid to agree to go do those tests, especially since he knows he has nothing in his system and is already being placed under arrest. However, at this point, he's technically the victim of an unlawful arrest, and he should not answer any further questions and should already be mentally preparing to bring a lawsuit. Now, one quick thing. Before he gets in the police car, he makes sure that he calls his parents to meet him at the precinct. If this ever happens to you, make sure you have as many friends and family meet you at the precinct as possible. Therefore, there are witnesses, and the cops will be aware that there are people who actually care about you. Basically, the same way that when you have a loved one or a family member in the hospital, you and your relatives take turns supervising them by their bedside in order to make sure that they're getting the best care possible and that none of their needs are being neglected while they're in the hospital. It's the same thing if you end up in a police precinct for an illegal reason like this. You call as many friends and family as possible because the more people asking questions, the more times the cops have to make up stories and lies for why you're there, and the harder it is for them to keep their story straight. Later, if you bring a lawsuit, that means there are potentially more witnesses who can help you and paint the picture that what the cops were doing was an abuse of your civil rights. So when's, when did when we use weed last? It's always been so long, I can't remember. I've done it before, but it's been a really long time. Definitely, definitely over here. Why wouldn't you tell me that in the in the in the field? Because yeah. I stopped doing that. Because it does nothing good for me. And why is your field sobriety so bad? It wasn't even bad. I was doing good. At least stayed on the lawn. The only thing I messed up on was not going nine steps like you said. But I thought you were gonna tell me when to move. Mm -hmm. Two zeros. One reason I had my brights on is because I had hit like a then it was a blue. I just thought it'd be better to have my brights on than having a headlight on. Having your brights on in the city limits is illegal. Yeah, but so is having a headlight on. So, so. Yeah, and both your both times you're both either one you're gonna get stopped. Yeah, and I, given I, a warning. Yeah, I get that. But like, yeah, either way it's gonna happen. I just feel like it's more safe to have the brights on than having one out. All right, I'm going to read the implied consent advisory to you. Just follow along with me as I read it to you out loud. Code chapter 321J. Alright, you don't have to answer this now. Having read to you the appropriate implied consent advisory, hereby request a specimen of your urine for chemical testing to determine the alcohol or drug content. Again, you don't have to answer that now. Like I got a piss? Is there a That's what I'm going to request. Yeah, piss. Well, you're Earlier in this video, I said that the cops can legally ask you anything. Now, I want to make it very clear that ask and request mean the exact same thing. So like I said, cops can legally request that you do anything, but that is the same as saying legally ask that you do anything. The cop here says, I'm going to request that you piss because that language sounds more like a lawful command even though it's not. In this situation, there are many things you could say. The easiest would be, I do not consent to any blood or urine samples, but I will perform other tests under the supervision of a drug recognition expert. After that, if you don't know what to say, the safest phrase to repeat which can never hurt you is always, I am not answering any more questions without a lawyer present. I blew zeros. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. So, um, Give me a rundown. Uh -huh. Stop him. He's got his brights on. Um, okay. Tell him what? Because he has a headlight on. Okay. So anyway, um, get up there, moving real slow over to the passenger compartment. Um, fumbles through the registration three, three, three or four times. Looks at it. Is it okay? Yeah. I didn't fumble. I was trying to find it. Looks at it and says, "Is the insurance on the card?" What's the time? Uh, it is. Uh, 12.55 a.m. Go ahead, I see. Oh, that wouldn't make you better so up. Yeah. Now this little clip of the cop explaining his side of the story to the drug recognition expert is a perfect showcase of why there is potential financial gain for black people whenever there is an unlawful arrest. This is the type of cop we are usually dealing with. 
His thinking abilities are so weak that he can no longer distinguish his lies from the reality. Here he is telling the drug recognition expert what he observed, which as you will see, is totally detached from the reality of what the drug recognition expert sees once he starts conducting his own tests. He's fumbling through his registration, looks at it, says, is the insurance on the car? And he says, maybe. So he reaches back over very lethargically. Um, he's got gum in the mouth, and I said, put your gum on the back. Come back. I said, how much have you had to drink? Nothing. Um, field sobriety. I'm very much on HGN. Where did you guys do God uh, Fields? Uh, 200 block, uh, 100 block South Third Avenue West. Okay. Like, uh, I, I didn't, it was just in the rain, though. He didn't care. It was just starting. Oh, okay. Just starting. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, walk and turn, we take 14. Mm -hmm. And then, improper turn, we stop walking off, offline. And then, uh, 15 back. Okay. And then, uh, never use his arms. One leg stands fine. LOC can't hold yeah, the his eyes in. Modified Robert was 738. He could be teased for his So then I read him right. I said, it was the last time he smoked weed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, and I said, well, do you want to do a drug influence evaluation? Sure. No. Oh, okay. So then that's when we sure. put him under arrest. No, so, I understand. Finger to nose was, was up here and down here. Okay. Um, are you all caught up on your implied consent? Yep. I've read him everything. All he needs to do is make his phone calls if he wants. Okay. Um, what do you say modified Rumberg was? Like 37? 37, 38. Okay. So it's close. But I mean, he's over 35. Sw sweaty and he's got a uh, pretty bad eyelid tremor. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, yeah. Anything in the car? No. Okay. It was just the, the brights. The brights stop. and the. Um, stop it for the brights. Okay. Bullshit. This is bullshit. Said, um, we've been like that all the time. We'll figure it out. He accused me of being drunk. So he, and I was like, yo, that's he's, he's got his brights on. That's so what we know. That's what we know. That's what we know. What's his name? And then he blows zeros. That's what he says. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do with them and we'll go from there. I don't know if you want to do one or not, but I'll, I'll try and calm them down yeah. if, if you want. No. I say that just to cool him down, yeah. and then I'll be okay. yeah, just keep an eye. Up. Just stay within shouting reach, and okay. or watch me at the camera or something. I should be okay. okay. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Good. So my name's Drew. Uh, we're here at the police department. All right. So it sounds like you got traffic stopped. Yep. For, um, just for my brights, and then he accused me of being drunk, and I was like, "You can me right now. I'm not drunk." Sure. Um, can we have a cap? Can you go now? Yeah, go ahead. He said it smells like you smell like alcohol. Your breath smells like alcohol. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, let's blow. I blow, and all of a sudden he's like, do you smoke weed? After he said, I smell like alcohol. So he's really trying to force it. He's trying to force something, even though he knows I'm on nothing. He's just okay. not trying. He's trying to be right, even though he's wrong. Go ahead. I'm being completely honest with him. Yeah. Like you look at my record, nothing's on my record. I, was, I play college football, so I don't do drugs. Sure. Like, it has to be wrong. I'm in here for no reason. So, like a sprained ankle yeah, or right something. Right before I did the test, but I said, "Hey, I'm good enough. It's not gonna affect me." Okay. You know, kept, my, kept my shit straight. Okay. Um. So here's where I come in, right? Yep. Um. I have different certifications in officer winners. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm called a. I have a drug recognition expert. Um. Certification. Yes, sir. Um. So my training. Um. It does involve field sobriety. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna ask you to do some of the stuff you've already done. He's gonna do it. So he just need, he's gonna do it. Just so he wants to do the eval. Uh, you might want to wait. It, I'll be okay. I'll holler if I need you. The drug recognition expert is much more reasonable than the cop who pulled him over, Officer Winters. As you saw, the drug recognition expert's tests were pretty similar to a field sobriety test and all of it was on camera. But unlike Officer Winters, the drug recognition expert isn't motivated to get an arrest for the night. In this case, agreeing to these tests was better than the alternative, which was either going to be arrest or blood and urine sampling. The kid passes the tests because the drug recognition expert actually has to apply them much more strictly.
Now definitely keep watching because you'll see how embarrassed the drug recognition expert starts to get. He clearly knows his colleague Officer Winters isn't very intelligent. He even tries to throw Officer Winters some bail by talking about how he's actually a good guy. But that's just because the drug recognition expert is clearly embarrassed about how wrong his fellow officer was. <clears throat> so your mom is also here. Bottom line up front, uh, we're going home tonight, okay? I don't think you're, I have no evidence or no information to suggest that you're under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Thank you. Rookie move. Rookie don't move. think so. So, I, um, I do just follow my... You know, I, Officer Winters is a very talented officer. I wear shorts when it's 30 below. Congratulations. Um, he's, so like I said, when he does, he's very good at these. Um, right now you're being placed under arrest for operating while intoxicated, okay? Um, he does the same ones I do, the same way. I offer him to you. Is he still here? Yeah, he's around here. Can I talk to him? If you want, um, I was just gonna take you home. Okay, yes, yeah, I just wanna speak to him. Okay, I'll, 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 when we get outside, I'll see if he's busy, right. um, and he can come out and talk. He would like to speak with you and Nate. So right now, you're about to see the biggest issue that I have with this kid. He's just too young and too immature to understand the opportunity right in front of him. And instead of looking to benefit financially, he instead uses this as a chance to browbeat and humiliate the officer. He's too young to understand. Anyways, watch this. Hey, buddy, what's going on? So, uh, I just want to know, like, how does it feel? How does it feel for a while? I, remember I told you when you first pulled me over? I had nothing to drink. He's going to look stupid. You know, like, you're impaired. You're on drugs. You drink alcohol. Turns out I'm not on any of that. Okay. Really dumb decision by you today. I'm really disappointed in how you can't bite your job. I based my decision on your field sobriety tests. Was it really failed though? It was, it was pouring outside. It was terrible yes. cement. Okay, but like I said, I'll blow right away. I do everything. But there's else. also steps that I have to go through. Did you really thought I was drunk? Uh, the way I first spoke with you and your movements. Now I'm going to stop real quick and re-emphasize my previous point. It bothers me when I see people jeopardize their opportunity for financial gain. There might be value in getting footage of the officer admitting his mistake, which could be used later on in court. But the kid doesn't know how the officer is going to respond. So why risk saying something that makes people feel bad for the officer and that may make you look like a dick and therefore less sympathetic to a jury if the video is played in court. The best the kid could hope for by doing all of this talking was to get an apology from the cop. But what do you want with an apology from the cop? What you really want is for the city to apologize and to apologize to you with money. I believe something was off. That's crazy, man. This, was this your first false accusation? No. You said it was... I've been wrong many times. Yeah, I can tell. Terrible, man. So it's terrible. I hope you do better than that next time. Next time, I would recommend asking for clarification. If you don't understand something, ask. But I didn't need to do all this extra shit. Okay. Well, that's why we offer the test to you is... Like, I'll, you wasted my night. Three hours. Was it three or two hours? I don't know. We can't, we can't have this happen in Newton, man. I love Newton. Okay. I want you to do a better job than that. Okay. Okay, as I'm a citizen here, I love doing cops. You like, you're probably a good guy, right? You're probably a great Try guy. Me. And I'm a good guy. The cop says he has been wrong before. That may allow a lawyer to subpoena his record to see just how many times he has been wrong. And if it seems to be a recurring issue, even if you don't have grounds for a successful lawsuit yourself, this footage can help people who may have already filed lawsuits against him. The kid says that the cop wasted three hours of his night, which may seem a huge inconvenience to a teenager planning to hang with his friends or go home and chill. But three hours of unlawful detainment is a small price to pay if it leads to a settlement for tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars from the city. I don't have any record and you do that to me. Like there's other guys probably out in Newton right now, breaking the law, actually breaking the law. Like not over. I'm not saying there's not. And you, you waste your time with me, and there could be, someone's mom could be getting killed right now. You don't know, but you got unlikely, me but yeah, possible. And it was unlikely I was drunk. Uh, all, all of your indications from the time of stop. 
My breath didn't smell like weed, didn't smell like alcohol. This doesn't smell like alcohol for sure, so I couldn't find any other way to do it. One that arrests me. I offered you, when I offered you the drug recognition influence evaluation, you said no. So I had to go off of what I had on field sobriety. Oh yeah. But we just gotta do better than that, man. We just gotta do better than that. I deserve a apology. The driver got his apology, but like I said, that's too cheap of a punishment. His parting words to the cops, do better, that's wrong too. What cops do is find ways to target society's most vulnerable. Telling them to do better is telling them to be more crafty in the ways they trick and illegally arrest black people. The only way to change policing in America, whatever that means to you, is to punish police departments by bringing lawsuits. When a cop violates your rights, the only apology you want comes in the form of a check from the city. Chastising cops for their bad behavior accomplishes nothing. And if that's the only punishment they get, it may even encourage them to, next time, just be more crafty and less obvious in their future attempts at unlawful arrest. We don't want to put the cops on guard. When cops are not on guard, they will often hand you incriminating evidence of misconduct, unprompted and on their own. The more you simulate these interactions in your head, the better prepared you will be should a cop try to unlawfully arrest or detain you. If you would like to submit a video or need help finding representation in your state, please contact us on unlawfularrestprevention.org or email us at uap at unlawfularrestprevention.org. Our organization not only hopes to prevent unlawful stops, searches, and arrests of black people, but to provide guidance on how one should act in such situations in order to either get false charges dropped or to win a civil suit against the police. Yes, like I say, knowledge is power, but this type of knowledge and these teachings need to be rehearsed constantly and internalized in order to be effective in practice. We told her, all he had to do was stay quiet, but he told her, would have been alive, but he ran his boca. To them bitch ass police, call him popas, try to hide the truth, then it bubble up like soda. Got a crib in the hills that I feel like a pagoda. I was home chilling when niggas hit my phone up. They say you hiding out somewhere in Angola. It don't matter one bit to me where you go, bro. Me and the trap boys going on a mo hunt. Nigga, no 4K, colder Minnesota. Black on hip, S16 in Tacoma. Young game mind, I got the controller. We all loud blowers, but I never touched the coca.